Okay, in the previous example here, we built up a confidence interval for our demand for a type of EpiPen. And we found that the range here for the true demand would be somewhere between 850 and 1,005 pens demanded. Now, again, we're gonna examine later other ideas for how we could treat this data. And I chose it purposefully to show you that we shouldn't always use averages to do any estimates. Um, in this case, we're talking about the demand. And so if we're using this average to inform um, the demand um, for this type of EpiPen and to inform our ordering uh, quantities for the future, again, we need to be careful. Uh, and we'll speak to this more later. But let's just have a look here at the next step in this. So what we did was we sampled 101 demands or monthly demands, if you will, uh, and that built up this confidence interval. It's pretty wide. The margin of error is 77. So let's say we wanted to narrow down that margin of error. Uh, so let me just pause the video and write out the problem we want to solve next. Okay, so let's say the manager wants us to reduce the margin of error on our estimate to five units instead of 77. How many monthly demands do we need to sample to lower our margin of error to five? So that's the question we want to solve. So let's bring up the sample size formula that we're going to use now. Okay, so here is the formula. Uh, and let's go and use that now to solve for the required sample size. So to solve for n, we take our z-score, which we have from before, put a bracket around that first, and then take that z-score of the 1.95, times by our population standard deviation. That's all the way at the top of this spreadsheet. There it is. And then divide by the desired margin of error. In this case, it is five. Close that bracket and put it to the power of two. That'll do that power of two. Okay, beautiful. Wow, and that gives us 24,161 is our required sample size. That's a lot. Okay, little note here. I'm just going to do something first here. I'm just going to move this down one. I'm going to actually put in my desired error now too. And now let's just cell reference it instead. Instead of using five, I'm just going to go grab that reference and let's try playing with this error size a little bit. So when it's up at 77, which it used to be, we need to sample 101.88 um, units. Or if it's the 77.47, we get back down to our 101. Um, now, the smaller the required error, let's say 20, the larger the required sample size. To get us down to an error of five, our sample size gets really large, 24,000. We're gonna speak to that in the next video. Uh, again, this data set has a couple of things going on and just looking at the average, we'll, we'll miss out on this variability and where it's stemming from. Um, okay, now one last note just to wrap up this calculation. What we should really do for n, we should always round up. So I'm gonna do a round up call. If you want to, you can do this in Excel with a round up. So there is the formula. I'm just gonna pause and clean this up when we round n up. So we always want a whole number and we always want our error to be uh, at most 
whatever we picked, in this case, five units. So we round up to ensure that that's true, that our error is not larger than the cutoff at five here, or five units. Awesome. Okay, thanks for watching. That concludes our video on how to calculate the sample size when the error is given for a confidence interval question for means.